The World Bank projects that global economic growth could rebound next year, but that the number of people living in extreme poverty is expected to remain unchanged after a huge surge this year due to the coronavirus pandemic. The bank said India, Nigeria and the DR Congo account for the highest shares of the world's extremely poor. The country's poor are projected to grow faster than their population, meaning that extreme poverty will remain at the elevated 2020 levels through 2021. The projection came after the bank on Monday said the pandemic could drive between 70 and 100 million people into extreme poverty in 2020 as the global economic faces its worst recession in 80 years. Still with us is Dr. Tui Mbawundu, public affairs analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. All right. So while the possibilities look good for the global economic growth, the World Bank believes that the number of people living in extreme poverty is most likely to remain due to the coronavirus. What's your thought on it? Now, uh, let's first of all get it right. When epidemics or pandemic hits, it hits the poor more and it hits them worse. So now, uh, the coronavirus is not going to be different. It's going to affect the poor the more and it's going to affect them the worse. Now, if you look at the situation of Nigeria before the pandemic, okay, um, we were already living in the uh, uh, poverty capital of the world with about 84 million people on extreme poverty and as much as 90 million on uh, multidimensional poverty, okay? Now, we'll come to that. When the COVID-19 came, it further worsened the situation. Of course, you know that the many companies were shut down, the global supply chain was disrupted, and in fact, it cost a lot of money to even deal with the virus and stimulate and, and keep people at home because you have to give them um, stipends to make them stay at home. So again, all this combined together is going to worsen the poverty situation of already poor Nigerians. There's no single doubt about that. Poverty, as much as pandemic pushes people into poverty, or even disease pushes people into poverty, and poverty itself is a veritable breeding ground for diseases. So you see that the intricate connection between poverty and disease, and, the, and pandem this pandemic will not be different. So now for Nigeria, what we, we're seeing on our hand is like a double whammy. The, the, the country is having less money in terms of uh, incomes from, uh, accruable incomes from oil. And then we have weak health system. We have other epidemics happening in the country and now COVID-19 pandemic. So the, the number of poor people um, in Nigeria is, there is no question about it. But the question I would like to ask is, even with this pandemic, what is your assessment of how the government is addressing the issue? Um, what should be their priority? Now, you see, uh, this pandemic offers the opportunity to see the economy. I mean, to gather data and do education. Now, um, what government has done is to first of all say, okay, you know, stay away, stay at home um, and try to distribute palliatives. Um, there are a lot of challenges with that distribution of those palliatives. The palliatives was not reaching those people that were really more, most impacted by the effect of the pandemic. That is number one. Secondly, it, it was not sustained enough. And third, we're not using it to drive some data in terms of health. Now, look at our population. The last time we did population was 2006. We couldn't have sufficient, you know, the, the, the requisite, you know, a credible population to use to plan our data, which is very, which is very challenging. Now, we're moving into post-COVID era. Government has said that, okay, they're stimulating the economy. Look at what they're using to stimulate the economy. In other countries, we are seeing between as uh, 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 five to twelve percent of GDP being pushed out to stimulate the economy. Nigeria is pushing out just zero point three percent. The stimulus. How many people can that reach? The stimulus must be must be must be bold, must be hairy, must be audacious. It must reach as many people as possible. 
Because without it, you, it, to kickstart the economy back into formation would be really, really challenging. And then for now, for us now, it's time for us to really sit down and look at what can we do to our health system. Without health, without health, you know, because if you look at the concept of multidimensional poverty, you, have, you see that people are not having what you call opportunities and they're having deprivation. There's no, you know, in, in, in such a small sweep, you will see that they don't have access to health, they don't have access to education, their standard of living is messed up. So now, what, these are the areas you need to do something meaningful about. You need to restructure your education to in tandem with your level of living, the desired level of living. You need to look at education, for instance, and put as many children into school as possible and feed them, okay? And then stimulate those, their parents, to get some little fund, you know, to cater for them. If you don't do this, if you don't put those reforms in education, you don't put those reforms in health, you don't put those reforms in agriculture and the standard of living, uh, you are not going to touch poverty. It's, uh, the despite is going to get wider and the whole thing will get wor worsened. And of course, that's a, a recipe for instability. All right. Thank you very much. I wish we had more time to talk about this, but hopefully we'll have you in our news subsequently. Thank you so much for your thoughts. Thank you.